So it will it would yes we do, but it would be great if you start from like over overall. It's like kind of what you are doing as if we don't know. It's kind of just giving us okay, this is what we want to do and you know and for that we need to do this and therefore this. So kind of having a, an entry. Okay. Um, so the okay, yeah. So for this project was yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. I still need. Sorry, just Hello. go on. I, I will mute my mic. Okay. Oh, okay. Um. So for this project, we were supposed to use deep learning architecture to try and convert speech to text. So from using recorded audio files. We're creating a model that can be able to translate that into text and do it as accurately as possible. So before we can um, use the data to uh, model for modeling purposes, we have to pre-process it. And uh, pre-processing means that we have to ensure that they have um, a standard sampling rate that we can be able to extract features from the audio files. So that we and also that we can um, convert the text or the transcriptions into numbers, so that the machine learning model can be able to run them and predict um, the test set. Uh, so for our EDA, we wanted to visualize a couple of things like duration. Um, so when you watch, we had a file, I mean a script where we we created a function that could be able to loop through the folders and the files and store the file path, the sample rate and the duration of each audio file in one data frame. And we stored that in a CSV file to make it easy to run our codes because at that time we were still doing it locally. So yeah, um, for our, the sample rates, all of them are a sample rate of 1600, 16,000, sorry. And for the duration, the maximum duration was 6.15 seconds, and then the minimum was 2.15, but averagely they would range at 3.5 seconds. So to visualize this, we plotted a histogram, and this can clearly show us that most of our audio files have a duration of between 2.2 or 3 to around 2.6. So that's the distribution of our duration. Then we also used the box plots to kind of see if we have any outliers in our in our data, and we actually do not have any outliers. Um, so we there was no point of filling outliers because we do not have outliers in our data. Um, we also tried to kind of get you know the specific files that had the longest durations and the shortest durations. So, we also created a, t a data frame and put that into put that information into the data frame. So the first table shows us the top five longest audio files, and the second data frame shows us the shortest audio files in our data set. Um, we, while still exploring our data, we tried to figure out the length of uh, the transcriptions for our audio file. So we created a, well, we ran some codes so that we see how long each transcription was. And we have a situation, which you can see from the plot. Um, most of our audio files had a transcription length of 40 characters, but we had extremes like 120 and some having like two or three characters here. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the same thing as we did for the duration, these are the files that had the longest translations and this is the ones that are the shortest. So yeah, this is five five characters in the trans in the transcription. Mm. Yeah. I think I'll pass it over to Zalala to continue from there. Fantastic. Thank you, Kate. Right, just Okay. Hello? Uh, can I continue? Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, go on. Hello. 
Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, after we got an insight of our data, then the next that we move this to the try to model using a sample. So we use the, our Swiley data set, and it's normally, when it comes, it is classified into subfolders. So we just use the first one. So that in order to see, to try out different models fastly, and now, since we have the AWS, we will now use the whole data. So here are just the imports, and uh, here we just loaded sample uh, audios and the uh, transcript. So that, here is the tokenizer part where we change our transcripts into uh, integer sequences. So here's the function where uh, we generate the characters and uh, we map them to their respective uh, integers or numbers. So but normally, Swahili, in Swahili, there are alphabets that have uh, two, with, uh, that are combined, like the, there's a CH, for example. But for trial, we first thought that it might be hard on the module, trying to figure out one letter and two letters. So first, we now we tried it on a single letters, thinking that when uh, there is a letter CH, when there is a letter C, always an H comes uh, next to it. We tried to see if it will figure it out. So that's why here we used the normal, all the Latin alphabets. So we made our character map using it, uh, giving it an empty string and a space also, a place in the character map. And we define two functions for generating an int sequence from a text and the vice versa. Uh, after that, we made a data generator class because normally when we train in deep learning, uh, training is done normally in a small groups called bots. So we have to construct them. So this class is normally it inherits from the TensorFlow sequence class, and it accepts a list of audios, texts, and uh, part size. For so that, it will store them here. Then uh, when we access the gate item, magic this magic method, we give it the index here. So we will multiply each index by the batch size. We'll start from that index. That's easy. This one is the starting index. Then after that, we'll add one on the index and multiply it by the batch size. Sorry. So after we got the indexes, we will loop through the indexes and access it from the audios in the text that we that were imported. Just to let you know, you have three minutes only. Oh, okay. So the data generation's purpose is generally to accept in audios and labels, then also record each uh, each original language, and they are also padded here by the longest audio and longest text. So after that, here we define the functions for calculating the CTC loss. Then. We wanted not to save the uh, spectrograms into files then reading. So here is a class defined for creating spectrograms on the fly dynamically. After that, we define the preprocessing model. In the preprocessing model, there is an input layer uh, which accepts the raw audio. Then there is a log mail spectrogram that generates. Then we normalize it. After that, we tried three types of models, a simple normal RNN, a bidirectional one, and the CNN combined with RNN. So that we defined a train model. Then here we initialized this, the preposting, the speech, 
models. Then here is where we train to our model. Here we tried it with the 100 epochs. And that loss finally came around 38. After that, we predicted it. Uh, we predicted with four sentences here. And as you can see, the it doesn't get the perfect word, but there are tries on character level. It gets some of them. There are some similarities. So this is that we tried. But for the next, uh, for the coming, for today and tomorrow, we will try to add different type of augmentations. And we will try to make our model, the CNN and, and RNN combined. We will try to make it better adding uh, by adding layers by using capital parameter tuning and other methods so let me hand it to you okay thanks Lalem. if i have the time one minute uh, we collaborated we tried to collaborate on the same notebook and we have written a short article on how to collaborate uh, with jupyter notebook there are a few uh, ways that we have tried, and we found that the deep note is a much better version. So here is a demo version. For example, you can see that there are online members of. You are not presenting. Can you share your screen? Oh, oh sorry. Okay. Okay, so here we wrote uh, a short article uh, by the advice of Yapbal, and we tried to review uh, how to collaborate on the uh, same Jupyter notebook. And we found that this one, the deep note, is a much better version, at least for now. Here, as you can see, there are online members of our team, and we can contribute the same time in. Uh, one notebook and for example you can see that we have tried here it's real time unfortunately it is a beta version and uh, if you can if you want to create a team it only allows you three people but if you can share if you share a single notebook and it gives them edit access for example this one is zalalem's notebook but he gave us access to edit so all of us uh, with these different color labels you can see the cursors of each of us and we can collaborate in here so i'd like uh, to recommend any members to try it out and to collaborate on here this is a beta version actually but it works for now this is this wonderful one. it's great hopefully that you will have time also to publish this document that you prepared in medium or something that's okay. just uh, right. because it's really good it helps people and um, so sure. okay. just something you always it's good to show. Um, okay, great. Okay, so questions. So questions to this group. Anyone have question? Uh, I just want to congratulate everyone for the good job done. Uh, I can see that you have made a great work. Uh, I advise you to continue in that way. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks, Policy. Anyone else? I swear, I swear. So if not, I just want to, one, one part that I just want to, it's not only for this team, but for the rest. So what do you want to achieve? Like, in a way, like, because always it depends on what accuracy is possible and is your code, for example, if you have, like, 3,000 hours of Swahili, can you, can, will it be um, improved? So it's kind of like, try to set a goal for yourself where, you know, how many things you can try of course there are so many things you would try but at least you know from literature reviews you have seen you know what are the things that you would try at least for this one such that you can yeah, use yeah, all members of your group okay. to yeah, taste yeah, and to give them the code and kind of they do one part or for them to implement the part so this is something usually having a stand a goal drives you so just that would be, okay great so next team who wants to go next one there's no idea. Oh, yeah. Hello, everyone. Hey. 
Okay, so right. for our group six, the aim is for our people to use our app whenever they buy food and so that they can use their voice in order um, to activate their app and register their list of items they have bought. And our responsibility was to build a deep learning model that's capable of um, transcri transcribing a speech to text for uh, the Amharic language. So the first thing that we have done was creating the GitHub org, and then everyone will have their own branch and start working on different tasks. And then we have created different issues and asked each team member about which tasks they would like to work on and uh, divided the tasks that way. We had different uh, Google Meets, the, maybe once or twice a day, and we discussed different things. Uh, the first thing that we have done was pre-processing the data before we use our data to train our model. We have done different data visualizations and extracted uh, features. We have uh, built two different models using PyTorch and TensorFlow. And uh, the first thing that we have done was we used uh, part of our data set in order to train our model. Uh, we used 100 records in order to check if the model is working or not, since we don't have uh, server access by that time and uh, we used uh, 100 record records for that. And uh, it has around 100 epochs and the performance is not that good. My teammates will show you later on by sharing their screen, but the performance uh, was not that much, but we will try to improve our models in the next few days. We, some of us also worked on the data augmentation part, the dockerization, the MFCC, and uh, we also need to resize our data from, and from that data visualization, we have seen that uh, the, the duration of the audio files varies from one second up to 24 seconds. And uh, we also need to deal with that and resize uh, our audio files again. And also we have uh, set up our own self-hosted runners for CML and uh, have also set up DVC. And finally, we uh, we didn't use a single notebook to collaborate like the other teams. Instead, we have written different scripts. And finally, uh, we had a Google Meet and tried to integrate what everyone has done into a single file. And uh, some of us have already started working on the wave up. And to mention some of the challenges that we have faced so far, um, since most of us are, are somehow new to these concepts, uh, we had some kind of difficulties, but the good thing was somehow one of us were good at some of it. And as a result, I personally can say that uh, I have learned a lot. And we have also faced some issues with the server. It was uh, unresponsive for some time. And I think that has been fixed now. And we have started a training yesterday using uh, 1,100 records. And also, it might be difficult to uh, work in a large groups and uh, we were around 10 or 9 people and that might be difficult at times, but uh, everyone was making an effort in order to make it work and I'm really thankful for that. And finally, I think it will be a good idea to give uh, my team members a chance to present what they have done so far. So uh, I think we have Azaria, Yosef, Nathanael, and Nathanael here, though she couldn't make it today because uh, she has some kind of power problems. But we have Azaria, Yusuf, and Nathanael. So let me give, give the chance to uh, Yusuf to present about what he has done so far. Thanks. Uh, from, yeah, just just, just one comment. It's really excellent review. But for, for the future, whenever you are talking online, even if it means just a single page where you have a white thing, your group name, if you present it, it gets a bit more like you're alive, like it's there. Yeah, just just as a comment, every time you talk, it would be nice to present something like so that people get engaged. Or if you are, if not, then switch on your video so that people can engage because online things is very hard. And so just, just only that comment. But it was good, excellent review. OK, go on. Uh, who is giving? Is that you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hello. Hi. It's not even. Okay. It's Can you really hear you, Joseph? Just to see. You I'm exactly muting because uh, my background is a bit noisy. Okay. Okay. Thank 
Can you see my screen? Oh, yes, it does. Okay. Um, here are the steps we follow to pre-process our data set. Um, first, we loaded the uh, audio files and we used a sampling rate of uh, 8,000 hertz. And we only loaded here, we only lo loaded uh, uh, 100 audio files. So the, the largest audio had a length of nine seconds. And then we load the transcript file. Um, uh, okay, here is a wave plot of one of the audio files. And, and the first step was after, after loading the files was to resize the audios to have, uh, for example, if an audio file was three seconds long and we simply did at 8,000 hertz and another audio file was four seconds long, the array length would, would differ. And since we want to train our model, since we want all, all the samples to have equal dimensions, we resize them and pad them with zeros or silence. And this sample was transformed to this one. Uh, everything after the fifth second is silent. The next step is to augment, and uh, we shifted uh, the, the, the audio to the right or to the left by a random amount. And then the next step was to extract features. Here we we plotted two types of spectrograms. The first one is the MFCC spectrogram. The second one is a, a male spect spectrogram. And uh, we can use either one of those to train our model, and we used here. We used the second one, but we saved both of them to a, to a directory, and we later load them and train the model with them. And then we we encode uh, since uh, the transcripts are written using the Amharic alphabet. We encoded them using integers, and to achieve this, we use the label encoder from Scikit-Learn. And here we here we uh, here we are fitting the label encoder with the characters, and here we are encoding them. And then, since we need to, the the dimension of the labels needs to, uh, needs to be the same, uh, we are padding the short ones with zeros. Zero, zero is represented by space. And then here is the deep learning part. In our model, we used one convolutional layer and then a dense layer and then bidirectional LSTM layers. And finally, uh, another dense layer with a softmax activation function and a CTC loss layer. And we train our model in batches and uh, the loss went down to, to a value of 24. And we only used uh, 100 files, 100 audio files to train. And then after we have after we predicted predicted the t value the performance of the model after we pre predict the values using the training set we have to decode decode it because the the model adds uh, a blank some a blank character to delimit to delimit the difference between for example if you have in in the english alpha if this was english if we had uh, if our labels are two O's, double O, we can distinguish it by, uh, the model can dis distinguish it by adding a blank and we need to remove that blank and we need to contract all repetitions and when we predict the result, here's what we achieved. Thank you.
for example, Great. Right here. Thanks. Everything is so you have one minute if anyone wants to present. Or are you continuing? I think Azara or Nathanael can go next. Nathanael can go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk again. I just want to go. Okay, so um, maybe then I'll go next. Um, sadly, the server that we were using, um, which I think just lost power. Uh, so like Betelgeum stated earlier on, uh, we decided to avoid using notebooks, um, uh, because they weren't really um. Uh, uh, because we didn't find uh, easy ways to actually collaborate. So um, what we were doing was um, we added uh, self-hosted runners, um, which had uh, GPU access to the server. So when anyone actually modified the train file um, and pushed to some specific training uh, branch, um, this runner would actually uh, train the new model and they would see uh, what was happening. And also we were trying to incorporate um, DVC pipelines to actually um, keep track of all the models uh, in the pull requests. And um, we are also maintaining uh, uh, three images um, using three tags for one for uh, any dev branch, uh, one for the stable version, and one for the latest. Um, so this is a bit about the ML ops pipeline. Wonderful. So it would be interesting also to know if you have the instance now in AWS, could you connect them to as part of your runners? Um, Did you try? Yeah. Maybe just uh, try it from your team, just connecting uh, you know, the AWS, and you can connect with, with uh, Kevin if there is anything, permission, whatever you need. But it might, it might be a good idea. Okay, we'll try to do that okay, uh, later. Cool. Great, awesome. Okay, any question to team, is that five? Yeah, yeah. Which yeah, team is that? It's team six, six. Team six, yeah, we'll, for we'll team six. Do we have, any, anyone has any question? No one, no one has question based on also what they do and what they see. Okay. Yeah, uh, can I ask them a question? Yep. Go on, yeah, okay. I think they said they have a runner, like when they push a new uh, file or code, uh, they will train the model and try to figure out if it performs well, they will accept it, or if not, they will not, I think. That's the way that they have been doing, but in here we have, if they implement this one on the whole data set, will it, this take a lot of time, or how they are going to handle this kind of problem? Like, if you train it in like 40,000 kinds of data and you try to see if that is working, uh, I think it may take longer time, so. How are they that kind of things? Um, yeah, so um, definitely um, trying to evaluate models on the entire data set is almost impossible. So um, taking a fraction of that data for um, for trying to for to try to evaluate the model is um, the approach that we're taking. Um, so like Joseph said, um, the model that we've trained uh, only uses around, I think, 100 audio files. So even um, using that, it will be possible. Maybe like maybe 1,000 data set. Um, that, that is not a number that we've uh, already selected, but only taking a fraction is what we're going to evaluate. And then we can retrain uh, based on the entire data. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, I think definitely Barakat raised a good question, but in some way, if if you had a lot of machine, it's okay, right? You can. I don't see the reason why you shouldn't. In any way, you were. If it's just only a small change, definitely you can think of it as a as a fine tuning. That means you have actually a model that is fixed by something, and then you are improving like 
so the weights are kind of already trained by something that's less sensitive and then you're trying to improve probably I don't know if you are improving only just uh, piece it's much easier than if you're trying to determine the weights of the deep learning from the scratch so in that way maybe you could you could but I think the, the, the setup I like it so finding a way like even if it's just fully training again if the whatever you change it is just a, a big part of the algorithm then that's fine but if it's just a small part I think testing only for the sake of you know just seeing if you can I don't know if, if you know exactly what you are changing it's easier to, to set up that but otherwise sometimes some good algorithms may not you might not they might not perform only with a small data but they're actually good so you might not know that one so if you are tuning models you might have an issue but yeah so probably setting it up as like slow and fast decomposition where like if it's a full one you run on a separate machine and one other machine probably to test for quick changes and that, that might that might address but it's an important thing to think about okay great so for the sake of time let's move to the next one who's which one which thing is the last for the afternoon group two yeah group two. uh i think it's us great so floor is yours okay good good evening guys uh First, uh, our task was to transcribe the, to change the, or to generate the text from a given sp speech using deep learning models. And uh, usually when doing that, what becomes challenging is actually getting the actual signals that produce the phonemes. So we'll, we will, we have tried to read about different models and how they're implemented uh, for this use case. So first, uh, what we did was build uh, an audio. First, we talked about the situations and we tried to um, divide the tasks. We created our own branch and did audio exploration, uh, audio augmentation, and audio manipulation. Um, so the first file, the notebook is not opening right now. I think it's because uh, it's big or something, but I'll just try to explain the script file that that's used to export the data. Um, so the audio explorer uh, class accepts the uh, files from the wave files in the transcription and tries to generate the different information that are needed to export the, the given data. So we have also created export TTS class that exports the uh, transcription file to JSON files. And it checks if there exists a transcription for the given uh, audio names because the transcription file also contains uh, uh, transcription in, uh, audio, which is not found in the uh, audio that has been given to us. So we load the data and then it provides all this information in a data frame. Uh, we have tried to get the different durations, which ones occur more, occur more frequently. We have tried to analyze the data by using uh, the different methods like uh, by using MFCC, by using spectrograms, by using uh, uh, zero crossing and others. I'm sorry, I'm not able to open that file and uh, show it to you guys. Uh, the second thing we did after this, after the, the exploration, was uh, the audio manipulation. And so as you can see, uh, we have we have loaded the file from the script uh, loader, from the script audio loader, which is inherited from the audio explorator script so it produces the name the duration the the channels the sampling rate and the different the you know the time series data it also shows if it has a corresponding transcription or not uh, so we have pre-processed the data by first changing the channels to stereo by duplicating the the channels and by changing the duration by padding it to the maximum duration and we have also 
try to standardize the sampling rate uh, first by sampling it to uh, 22,500 and then by just leaving it as 16,000. Uh, and then we have augmented that we have generated augmentation and did augmentation on that data, which I think yours will explain. Yours? I can go if she, if she's not here. Yeah, go on. Okay. Go, ahead. Oh. go on, yours. After I'll continue after you. Uh, hi everyone. Good evening. Uh, okay. Uh, last time, as I presented last time, I've been working. If you working. could share your slide, uh, your screen or okay. something would be great. Just for the sake of, or if you don't, usually just open your video just to get used to it because okay. it's very important. Uh, people know, like, see you see something usually. Okay. Great. Okay. Mm. Uh, can you see him? Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, good. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me go. Uh, this was a, a, uh, the data augmentation code that I uh, that I've shared uh, last time, and also that I've uh, presented last time. And um, here I created a uh, data web files. I mean, I generated web files using this code and. Um, which I put it uh, as a dynamic range comprehension, p shifting, time shifting, all those things. But before that, Deborah did uh, the resizing thing uh, by silencing and um, padding it to the same length to, I think, 13, uh, to the 13 seconds. And uh, one problem is that when I use uh, p shifting and uh, dynamic range and also time stretching, the Wave file that is generated. Uh, uh, some of the wave files that are generated uh, give us to 16 seconds, uh, and also to 14 seconds. That is, which is um, not equal to the one we wanted. Uh, that is 13 seconds. And I, I just create a separate folder and put it there, which uh, for the uh, which for the wave five which are uh, greater than 13 seconds. And after that, um, I used uh, this web file uh, to for modeling for modeling, uh, which is um, let me. And also, uh, I generated a train and a value JSON. Um, and for the modeling part, um, let me go with it. Uh, Okay. Can you hear me? Um, like... Yeah, we can hear you. Well. Okay. okay, and for the, for the modeling part, I've used uh, train curves as uh, this one, and uh, the uh, wave file, only the original one, because uh, the data augmented part is uh, somewhat not equal in size as the original file, so I only used uh, original uh, data. The wave file, and when I uh, run this, I face uh, some of uh, some bugs, uh, which uh, the car with the code. Uh, let me. This one. The character map uh, has um, uh, hasn't yet completed all the characters, Amharic characters like this one. So I have to fill those, all those things uh, which uh, wasn't in the uh, file given to us. I mean, shared to us. And after that, uh, I tried to run and I just uh, gave, I'm stuck because um, my CUDA is uh, out of memory. So 
I'm just looking at it. Is that, is that are you running in the AWS or are you running in your own? Uh, in the deploy, AWS, uh, is, uh, I got a bag also, which is, uh, let me share that. Mm. Uh, wait. Which well, says uh, the TensorFlow is uh, incompatible with the NumPy array, so I couldn't downgrade uh, the NumPy array, so uh, I prefer to use in my local. Of course, it works this one, but I'm um, also facing a GPU uh, scarce. Um, More and So, and, yeah. Just make sure to use resources, like whether it's, you know, maximize whenever you are, as, as of course, speed is first, but then maximizing also your resources so that you can run anywhere is getting yeah, great. Yeah, I'm also um, decreasing the patch size, but I don't know where, so I'm just figuring out. Great, awesome, um, okay. okay. Thanks. Jerusalem. Oh, okay, let me go a bit. Um, that particular error that you have is because of the NumPy version. Um, you should have let me know so that I can I can downgrade the, NumP the NumPy version for you. Um, oh. Elias, yeah, Elias had the same problem. And that's how I sold it for him, okay? So th to okay. the rest of the team, if you get any problem like this, just holla. Okay. Yeah, can you please do that as well for me? As I think I'm having the same problems. Uh, which group are you in? Uh, the same one. Group, uh, group two, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure, cool. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, so to you, you're safe. Uh, so what you would... Is it me? Okay. The config sheet. The DIT config sheet. Can you guys because listen? That to contains me? the game. So you need to get it. Yeah. Anyone? Anyone? We can hear you. Go on. Okay. So uh, Debora was telling you how we extracted the data and uh, how we have. Let me share my screen. All right. So uh, the audio exploration part consists of uh, we have done uh, we have explored the audio using seven different uh, compositions using its channel duration, frequency, the row crossings, and everything. Uh, because she did not uh, she was not able to share her screen. I thought that it would be complimentary to uh, to explain this part as well. And we have uh, augmented it. Is this uh, this is an aggregate plot to the duration seconds and the sum of the audio files that we have obtained. We obtained the audio files via not the DVC, but uh, I configured it through uploading the, the whole files of the Amharic recordings into a GitHub account. And then I cloned it into the AWS so that I can have direct access from there uh, during this uh, period. And uh, what, what was basically done was after we exploring, after we explored the data as an image file that this can be iterated into different kinds of visual confirmations and then that image will be featured into uh, a CNN model to be trained with. So we're currently uh, using to, uh, I'm currently right now, we're developing an RNN CNN model to, uh, to predict the value and uh, train the in my, our whole processes but uh, the reason why acoustic is not accurate acoustic modeling is not really unpreferable is because of its terribly predictive analytics so uh, we, we 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 decided to use some rn in CNN model and we have to define some ctc losses that we have to keep track on because the losses are important and the functions that we are the cut losses with the lambda functions uh, that, that's going to be integrated with keras uh, currently, we're trying to explore that, and what uh, everyone's what everyone's uh, contribution was the audio augmentation part was for the quality of the data, so that the training module can be reached with different kinds of different kinds of uh, biases and weights that the audio file might encounter. So, uh, the stage that we're in is more or less like this, and if anyone wants to continue, that's fine. I think it's awesome, great. I, um, and so what is, I think this is 
one part exploring uh, one part is exploring data and the other the other part is it's okay no uh, just so the other part is exploring the modeling right so in there are different places where you could improve and absolutely yeah, the quality yeah. of data is one uh, and then the then also the post processing is another one so that means once you have a model predicted model you know how do you kind of actually output the characters and and it's the same as the pre-processing so this is for the whole team actually for the whole groups that you could improve also by just you know uh, some clever way when processing the predicted one you can also uh, improve the kind of the accuracy right so you can break down now and also learn from the different things as well as you know hold some collaborations as well the whole point is that ultimately you want to get very as accurate as possible it's like with the different techniques you guys are exploring so this is just good i hopefully gives you who is working what and definitely the first thing is finishing and um so that you focus on that but if you have time if you have resources human resources for example to explore that part you know you kind of allocate that and you you find it and sometimes if it's data someone else also try to find data uh, so, so the whole point is ultimately you want to answer the business question which is okay we need you know to to get an accurate as accurate as Possible. But even if it's accurate to a certain context, that's better. Right? So if you find, for example, ah, we have more data on this, let's say, on a certain quantities, then you say, like, if we can even at least those keys we can identify better with higher accuracy, then that is amazing. Right? So always try to find, based on the exploration, try to find what are you doing well and can you actually uh, narrow it down to something that it does well. If you find that or that one also, that's also an incredible result. So just think of that. Someone thinking and you know tinkering to try to do something high quality based on the constraint that you have. So I have to run now, but you guys can continue. And it was great that to hear from everyone. But you guys can continue if anyone has questions. Mahalit and uh, Kevin and uh, Abu Bakar, you guys lead, and I will leave you here. But thank you everyone for the presentations. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. See you tomorrow, guy. Yeah, yeah. Au revoir. <laughs> you speak French, eh? <laughs> I'm, I'm watching Messi things. Uh, Paris Saint Germain. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good luck. <laughs>